How's it going, everybody? Rybrand here today, and we are back with your Kansas City Royals after a major offseason, a ton of moves. I mean, we got a new manager, and we just, we re, I mean, look at the team, guys. It's all A potentials. They're all about in their prime. Bobby Witt's 27, Tristan Casas is 28, Gorman's 27, Green's 27, Grayson Rodriguez is 28. Uh, not to mention, we still have Zach Gallen. We acquired Adley Rutschman this offseason. Uh, you know, he's got four years at $20.5 million. So uh, expensive. He'll be 34, but he's a catcher. Hopefully he doesn't drop off too much. And, I mean, we have catchers in the system. We've got Jeff Tanaka. We've got Blake Mitchell right behind him. Uh, so we are fine there. And, guys, this offseason was one where we just – something had to change. We had to do something different. So we said goodbye to some of the names that we were used to seeing. We really did uh, revamp our pitching staff. Um, and – um, honestly, I think we're in a better position because of it. I really think that we're going to have more consistent performances. Hopefully the outfield can, you know, step up. Obviously Pete Crow Armstrong was a big acquisition. We said, said goodbye to Tommy Edmond, Jackson Merrill still filling in behind him there. Uh, and then we got Riley Green, uh, Harrison Alonzo, Lyle Cortez, um, maybe Dominic Franco over Lyle Cortez. Lyle Cortez though. No, I think I'm going to go with Lyle Cortez. He's got the clutch. He's got the vision. He's got the arm. Uh, and he's a little bit better of a fielder than Dominic Franco as well. Uh, but Franco is only 20, guys, so he could still develop to be a very, very nice outfielder for us. Somebody like Lyle Cortez did. Um, but before we jump into the simulation here, guys, we've got contract extensions to talk about and just, just a few big ones here. Uh, Nolan Gorman is in need of a new contract. He's making 4.7 now. And if you look at what he wants, he wants 19 million. Um, I think I can actually get that down. Uh, wow, I can get that down pretty far, probably to like 16 and a half million. Uh, but you can see our max offer after that is only 5.7. So our player payroll is at 195 if we give him this contract. What I want to do is make sure that he is worth it. So let's take a look at the budget um, and just see what we're looking at, right? Uh, so we basically have a player salary budget of about... 202 million, I think is what it is. So that's why it'd be, it would only grow a little bit. But as far as players, you know, overall wise that are making a lot of money that we could end up moving on from, Zach Gallen, uh, definitely an option if we needed to find some more cash. Grayson Rodriguez and Riley Green, I think, are great steals. Same thing with Tristan Casas, Adley Rutschman, and then Bobby Witt obviously is one of the best players in baseball, making a deserved salary. Uh, Tristan McKenzie, another guy that we could end up moving on from. JoJo Romero is fine. Colt Keith is fine. Bobby Herman is fine. Pete Crow Armstrong really does need to earn this $14.5 million because we're going to pay, what, $2 million, $2.5 million more for uh, Nolan Gorman, who is arguably the better player on paper. Now we need to prove it, right? Last season was great with his 317 uh, batting average over 1,000 in the OPS um, the war, I would like to see that be a little bit better, although I don't think he's playing every day. And if he's just doing it with the bat, I'd like to see a bit more runs created. I don't want to trade him midseason, but I think what we'll do is we'll give him most of the season um, to to just show us. It's a, it, it could come back to bite me. We could end up paying him more, but I'd like to really make sure that I'm giving him the deserved amount. And, and then after that, you guys can see that there's not really too much that's too many players that are being overpaid. Probably Jose Leclerc, so somebody that we can trade in the offseason. He is 34 going into the second last deal of a six and a half million dollar deal. We paid him uh, quite heftily uh, as a reliever, but he's been rewarding us all but that one year having great ERAs. Um, and I just think that, you know, he's no longer the closer. He's been pitching phenomenally, so I can't really complain about it. It's been good value for the money, but at some point, you know, we may have to move on. We have to keep the relief or reliever salaries down as much as possible. But for now, I think what we will do is extend Blake Mitchell. He's looking for three years. Uh, I'm going to see if I can get him at three years. At, oh, we'll do three years at 3.1 million for a backup catcher who's got beat potential. He'd ar he's arbitration eligible afterwards. Um, I, I think this would be a good deal. The salary is too low. Okay, let's go with 10 million then. 3.3 uh, there we go. All right. So now are we able to, yeah, we'd have nothing available to pay um, Nolan Gorman. We'll figure it out in the off season. I can obviously undercut him, but you can see our max offer goes way down. So we're going to have to do some, well, some budget shenanigans uh, in this off season. But for now, I'm not worried about the budget. Uh, I'm worried about actually performing on the field. 
Hopefully keeping everybody happy and, and, and dominant uh, is what we need to do. Maybe it's a Memorial thing. I don't know. But let's go ahead, get to the regular season, meet the starting 26-man roster for opening day, and hopefully begin our dominant campaign, which ends with a World Series victory. All right, so we have made it up to the start of the regular season. And here are your, what year is it? 2028 Kansas City Royals ranked first in overall, first in contact, first in power, first in pitching. 19th in defense and 30th in speed, so the slowest team in the league, which I don't know if I necessarily agree with that, um, that we're the slowest team in the league, but I thought we had some guys with speed, some decent players, but uh, but yeah, okay, so here is the opening day roster. We've got Zach Gallen and Grayson Rodriguez, Tristan McKenzie, Bobby Herman, and Ryan Pepio as our starters, Ricky Tiedemann, who we did acquire in the offseason, I believe, uh, what was this, the um, uh, Maddox trade, was it? Uh, oh, I forgot his name already. Um, anyway, we moved on from him. He was he came in in the same offseason as Zach Gallen. Uh, and we brought in Ricky Tiedemann, who pitched for the White Sox. And, you know, we, we, we toyed with the idea of sending him down, but we are going to leave him up just because he's out of minor league options. And I don't think a 25-year-old, 79 overall pitcher with A potential is going to make it through waivers. Um, so we're going to leave him up here. It didn't mean that we sent Jason Foley down, but... Uh, he has only been sent down once, so the, the second option there. He is making 2.9, so it's not great that we are, you know, paying him that much to play down there, but honestly, it is what it is. Um, otherwise, we got Ronzi Contreras, Caleb Ferguson, Nick Sandlin, and uh, Jojo Romero, as well as Jose Leclerc, Mariano Diaz, and Adbert Alzole uh, in the bullpen for us. Then in uh, at catcher is Adley Rutschman and Blake Mitchell. Jeff Tanaka, I'm leaving him in, in double A just because I feel like that's where he's been growing quite well. He's 21, 68 overall. He could be an absolute stud. You can see his his speed and stealing is great. His fielding is great. So is his arm. I'd like to see it get a little bit more accurate. Um, it's just the bat that needs to really just get into the 60s, and I'll be super pumped about him. Uh, at first base, we got Casas and Pasquantino. Pasquantino may be a DH. Um, maybe not. Nolan Gorman there is going to play second for us. Colt Keith playing third. Bobby Witt at short. And yes, we only have one additional infielder and he's a first baseman, but that's because of this real quick. Uh, Dominic Franco is our left fielder. Pete Crow Armstrong is in center. Jackson Merrill really can play anywhere but third. We've got cover at third too. First, second, short, left and right, as well as his main position being center. So he's really the guy I'm viewing as a utility man. Whenever somebody needs a rest, uh, he'll step in. Riley Green, Harrison Alonzo, Lyle Cortez. Lyle Cortez, outfielder. Harrison Alonzo, outfielder. And Riley Green, outfielder. As well as uh, Dominic Franco, who is an outfielder as well. Pete Crow Armstrong, outfielder only. So Jackson Merrill is more of that all-around utility guy. Can play anywhere. Not hoping that he plays in the outfield very much, but hoping that he does step in and spell uh, Nolan Gorman or Bobby Witt should we need that. I believe Bobby Witt can play third, too. So if we need to, we can do that. I think Tristan Costas can play third. Yep, so <clears throat> we have options to rotate the team around. Take a look at the depth chart. You can see that they are platooning Jackson Merrill and Pete Crow Armstrong, as well as Dominic Franco and Lyle Cortez. Um, Lyle Cortez is better against lefties. Franco is better against righties. Uh, we'll see how he does. I, I kind of want Harrison Alonso. Where is it? Is Harrison Alonso not, like, playing at all? Um, because that is a mistake. Yeah, Harrison Alonso should be playing absolutely. Uh, maybe I'll make him a, just a natural left fielder. The arm isn't good enough, so I think I would make him a natural left fielder anyway. I'm going to do that really quickly, and then we'll go ahead and see if they've switched up the uh, uh, the lineup. So yes, indeed, they have. We now have the 10th best left fielder in all of baseball. It's crazy to think an 82 is the 10th best in baseball. Uh, but you can see Harrison Alonso is going to play uh, left field against righties, which is, I think, where he belongs. 77 contact, 72 power. Um, he's an all right fielder, but he will be platooning with Vinny Pasquantino. So Vinny is going to be the DH against righties. Harrison Alonso is going to be the DH against lefties. He's got the 83 contact, 60 power, and the clutch is there as well. Um, I, I think it's fine, and it's going to get him at bats. It's going to help him grow and develop. You can see last year he had 358 at bats. Really had a poor OPS, so I'm hoping to see him really take that next step this season. Uh, and that means that Pete Crow Armstrong and Jackson Merrill are just platooning at at center. I'll show you guys the lineups. It's easy to show you who's playing when. Uh, you can see here that Jackson Merrill is playing against righties. Uh, Pete Crow Armstrong will put him on the on the right there. You can see against righties, he's just not as good, and Jackson Merrill's got the vision. And then against lefties, Pete Crow Armstrong is there. 
He's a great fielder, great speed. Hopefully we can figure out a little bit more to do with uh, everybody getting the appropriate amount of playing time. But I I'm really happy with, you know, what's on the bench with Lyle Cortez, Vinny Pasquantino, and Jackson Merrill against lefties. And then obviously Pete Crow, Armstrong, Cortez, and Franco here. So Franco is playing against lefties. He's got decent, uh, decent enough stats, it looks like. I think I'd rather have Lyle Cortez playing, though, considering he's got 83 contact. It's just a loss of power. Uh, against the lefties, so 66 and 48, I mean, it's not even a loss of power. I don't know why Lyle Cortez is not playing against uh, lefties like that, but we'll, we will make that change right now. We do have a lot of lefty bats. We have a lot of lefty bats. I just realized that. But then take a look at the pitchers. Zach Gallen, Rodriguez, McKenzie, Herman, and Pepio are the starting five. Tiedemann and Contreras are the two long relievers. Contreras, 76 stamina. I'd like to see him get some more run in as a middle reliever, but have Mar having Mariano Diaz, Caleb Ferguson, Al Zolai with Romero, Leclerc, and Sandlin. I'm surprised they have Sandlin as the relief pitcher to be, or as the closer, to be honest. I mean, you guess he does have the best pitching clutch out of anybody. That's only for when people are on base. I don't know. We'll, we'll let it ride for the season and we'll see how it goes. Uh, but it's now time to get the season started. A season where, guys, I really expect us... Hey, look at our defense. Uh, defense got worse, but our speed got better. I knew we were faster than that. Uh, but a season where I expect to win the AL. I, I expect us to be the number one seed in the American League. Hopefully, the coaching changes um, that we made. Let's see. Staff contracts, coaches. Hopefully, Vance Wilson here is going to be able to get us over the hump. You can see we uh, the, three new, uh, the four new guys are Vance Wilson, Ruben Nibla, uh, Adrian Calero and Zach Landgraf. So hoping that all of these guys, we spent a lot of money on, uh, um, on them, right? We're paying them a ton. Hopefully we can, uh, hopefully we can, 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 you know, actually get, get, get some wins this season. Like we had hoped. So jumping in, back in after the first month of the season, uh, we've dropped in contact power and pitching, but improved in defense and maybe speed. I think we were 26th in speed or were we 20th in speed? No, we were never that high, I don't think. But hey, season's going well. 17 and 11, we've got 607 win percent, 8 and 2 in our last 10. So just had to get the ball rolling. But 17 wins in the first month is good enough to tie the Rangers uh, and be three back of the, uh, I think it's probably two and a half back of the Tampa Bay Rays here. As you guys can see, though, our runs against are phenomenal. 132 runs scored, 86 runs against. Um, so I'm absolutely loving that 86 runs against the Dodgers have 81 and they've scored tw about 25 more runs than we have. So you can see that they've earned that 21 and seven record. Uh, but you can see that, I mean, our run differential is probably the best in baseball Our ERA 308. I'll take that batting average 273 on base percentage 364. You can see it, it's just, it's better than everybody else in the division, which is important because you know, uh, last season we had the best pitching staff, but not the best pitching staff. Um, transactions, what? Oh, pending transactions that Clay Holmes was just waived by the Dodgers and Mick Abel on waivers. Okay, they are gone. So, oh, well, completed. Okay, they're bringing up Jack Leiter. And then our roster. All right. Ooh, Avila was hit hard. Anybody we care about? Manzanillo, uh, Chase Strumpf, uh, raked. Good to see that. Cody Lawyerson and Julio Villalobos had a strong month in AAA. Things we love to see is, is Julio Villalobos, 77 overall, B potential, 21 years of age, 177 ERA in 45 innings. Wow, that is phenomenal. So I won't dive too much into the stats of everybody up here. Uh, you can see Zach Gallen needs to pitch better, but Rodriguez is pitching well. McKenzie's pitching well. Harman is continuing to be a dominant force. Pepio is playing well, and Tiedemann has got actually two wins and one loss. 26 innings pitched for a long reliever this early is, I guess, not great. Not bad, though. Um, Sandlin has yet to allow a run. Knock on wood. That looks good. Uh, Jojo Romero is doing okay. Four and a half ERA. It's okay. Uh, Caleb Ferguson looks great in his seven innings pitched. Uh, Contreras pitching phenomenally out of the bullpen for us. And then, yeah, the rest of these guys have pitched uh, just a couple innings, but... The fact that our bullpen's actually playing like it should is is encouraging to me. I'm not going to dive too much into the hitting stats. It's a little bit too early right now, but just wanted to show you guys the team stats as we got to the beginning of May. All right, guys, here at the 1st of June, and 39-16 and 16 is our record. 709 win percentage. Oh, yeah, by the way, in the month of May, we went 22-5, and five, gained 17 games uh, just above 500. It is absolutely ludicrous. Uh, you can see our defense and our speed are continuing to improve. That, that stuff's going to fluctuate all season. But the good news is, guys, uh, we are just, we are killing it right now. And who is who's responsible for it? 
Uh, double A relief pitchers struggling. Okay, no. Double A Tino Peralta, good for him. Tucker Bradley, yeah, Leonard Enright, and Jonah. De yeah, okay. So, wow, everybody is hot at the top of the roster. You love to see that. You absolutely love to see it. Um, one thing I did want to mention is that on the IL, we did have Harrison Alonzo injured for like six weeks. He fractured his shin. Uh, so he was out for the mo majority of, uh, of May, or uh, excuse me, the majority of April. And then he came back sometime in the middle of May. And guys, you can just see it's unreal. Uh, the Twins still took a game off us. We actually lost the series to Colorado. But other than that, we <laughs> Colorado took two games off of us. I believe we, yeah, we lost to Baltimore, but we beat them 3-1 in this year. Guys, it's been insane. Um, you can see we've scored 308 runs and have 175 runs against. So our team is performing like the team we put on paper. Uh, the Twins are 11 games back because they're just about 500. 39 wins is seven above the Astros and eight above the Rays for the best in the American League. Has anybody else allowed fewer than, I mean, 221 here for the Red Sox is the next lowest runs against I see. That's what, 50? About 50 runs more allowed. Um, okay, and then you can see the Marlins are actually a dominant defensive team too, but 35 wins for the Phillies. We're still better than them. Oh my God, the Dodgers are the other team. Yeah, the Dodgers and us are... Well, they're second. We're both playing like we should be, uh, but they actually have a lot of competition from the Padres. I guess I shouldn't say a lot because they're seven and a half back, but the Padres for a 32 win team this early in the season, it's kind of tough to see them be seven and a half back, right? The twins with 29 wins. I mean, guys, 308 runs scored, 175 against the Dodgers with 313 and 189. So we were slightly more defensive. They've got five more runs for, we've got 14 fewer runs against. So let's take a look now. Finally, uh, at the statistics, who's playing well uh, and who is really propelling us to this monster start. Bobby Witt, holy mackerel. Guys, there's so many players with over 300 batting average. That is crazy. Uh, let's start with home runs. Nolan Gorman is the guy with the home runs. You can see, oh man, this is 284, OPS of 924. I think he, he's about to earn that contract at this point. I think I might give give it to him. Costas with 13, Witt with 12, uh, Green with 11, Pasquantino with 10 at just 165 at-bats, Colt Keith with 10 and 208 at-bats, Rutschman's got eight, Jackson Merrill's got four, and everybody but Lyle Cortez has a home run. That is awesome to see. Uh, absolutely. Who's driving home the runs? It is Bobby Witt, but Adley Rutschman is driving him home, not with home runs, but just by being a clutch hitter when it matters. As far as batting average, Colt Keith batting 327, Harrison Alonzo batting 321. Oh, do we have a breakout for the young star? Do we have a breakout moment for our young star? Batted 257 in his first two seasons. Now he's batting a lot more. Well, it's 28 at bats. Hold on. Let's let's pump the brakes. I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but it is encouraging to see that. Tristan Costas, 319. Riley Green, 318. Bobby Witt with 304. Pass. Wow. The, wor the, the batting average of Jackson Merrill is 258. And then it's Blake Mitchell, the catcher. Adley Rutschman batting 296 is phenomenal for us. I'm absolutely stoked about that. And then the OPS, obviously Harrison Alonso's only had fewer than 30 at bats, so we'll see now that he's healthy again. Tristan Casas over a thousand. Green, Pasquantino, Keith, Gorman, Witt, all above 900. Rutschman, Pete Crow, Armstrong in the 800s. Even Dominic Franco is in the 750s. Jackson Merrill, you'd like to see him be a little bit better, but hey. He's a utility guy. He's not playing, you know, all the time in the right same position. It's got to be tough sometimes. Uh, let's take a look at the war. Colt Keith with a 3.0 war. So not only is he batting incredibly well at 327, but he's also providing value and defensively, it seems, um, too. Tristan Casas, 2.7. Bobby Witt with 2.6. Green with 2.4. And Gorman, 2.4. So these guys, they both seem to be playing very, very similarly. Anybody in negative war? Lyle Cortez and Blake Mitchell, but it's barely anything. Everybody is having a great season war-wise. And then runs created. We're already at 47, 46, 40. I mean, these guys are doubling the amount of at-bats. If he gets 500 at-bats, he's going to have in like the 120s. Oh, my goodness. Now, let's take a look at our starting pitchers now, too. Ooh, Tristan McKenzie, back-to-back -back seasons where he's been pitching terribly. Look, he was balling out for Cleveland. He comes to Kansas City across the division and immediately forgets how to pitch. Um, Tiedemann is 5-1, and one, but the ERA is concerning. Only 46 innings pitched. Um, 60 for Tristan McKenzie. I don't like to see that. Grayson Rodriguez, Zach Gallen, Pepio, and then Bobby Herman. 
Bobby Herman's up to an 87 overall. The dominant lefty from Michigan, 6'3", 228. Oh, by the way, he's 21 years old, has a Cy Young and a Rookie of the Year under his belt, and he's going back for his title, which was taken by Zach Gallen last year, but Bobby Herman is dominant. Quality starts. We've seen nine from Herman in his 10 games started. So Tristan McKenzie and Pepio. Pepio, I'm fine with playing the way he is, right? He's our fifth guy in the rotation. He's making, what, $2.5 million for the next three years? Yeah. Tristan McKenzie, I'd like to see him be a lot better. For a guy who's making seventeen point four. Finds feels very easy to find the $16, $17 million that we would give Nolan Gorman right now. Uh, it's, it, it's right here. I found it right there. Like for like, um, money for money. Yeah, honestly. Um, not, not what, you, not what you want to see, but that's okay. Yeah. Tristan McKenzie with a negative, wa negative war. We have a negative war out of Tristan McKenzie. He's got to turn it around. Otherwise, yikes. Um, I may, I, I'm okay with how things are going right now, but geez, um, just not great. Uh, our relief pitchers pitching well, except for Jojo Romero, who had the, uh, the, the closer role taken from him. It is now Nick Sandlins. Who's had 16 saves. How many blown saves? Just one. Two blown saves from Jojo Romero, but six holds. Um, so pretty high variance there, but Nick Sandlin has taken to that closer role, guys, quite well. And at 31, you love to see it. Uh, uh, Rowanzi Contreras, our Rule 5 pick, 39 innings pitched, 229 ERA. Yeah, like I said, guys, he pitched way too many innings for Pittsburgh in the game back when he had above a 4 ERA, above a 6 ERA. Putting him in the bullpen is where he belongs at 28, 760,000 for next season two. We found ourselves a great relief pitcher here. Speaking of great relief pitchers, Jose Leclerc, Adbert Alzali, both have yet to allow a run um, with a save for Leclerc. I don't know how Alzali, uh, how does he have a zero? Oh, you know what? What Did he not give up the earned run? Was it just a run against? Uh, yeah, he had one run out loud, but it must have been on an error, so he didn't get charged with the earn run. That is so weird. Uh, but Mariano Diaz, 135. The bullpen's pitching like it needs to, guys. Oh, man, things are going well. We have to get up to the draft now here. One more month to go. Let's see how it goes, but I am feeling pretty optimistic. All right, guys, so as you can probably tell, the win percentage has declined. I didn't think we were going to go at a 7... 709 pace all season, but mid 650, right? 655 through 100 and what? Through 162 games. 162 games times 0.655 gets you to about 106 wins. So if, as long as we keep this pace, um, I, I, I'm fine with it, right? Because 100, and, well, 100, 607 wins is ab absolutely crazy, to be honest. And it's what I'm it kind of expecting. But uh, listen, all I wanted to do was be the one seed in the AL. We are absolutely that. The Twins, man, they will not die. The Minnesota Twins are an absolute thorn in my side and will not go away. They are 9-1 in their last 10. They're on an eight-game winning streak, so they picked up two games on us. They're five and a half back. 51 wins, by the way, is the second best record in all of the American League. I mean, the rest of the division needs to figure it out. The Tigers have been down here for literally every season. The White Sox are getting slightly better. Um, and the Guardians, well, they've been around here the whole time. Uh, the Twins, though, the Twins and us, man, it's what a, what, a, what a rivalry this is turning into. For the rest of the AL, nobody else is quite as dominant defensively as we are. 288. The next lowest is, again, the Red Sox at 338. So that's 50 fewer. The Twins are close. 338 is 50 more as well. So yeah, honestly, by 50 runs, we've allowed, uh, we've just been better. Uh, at, we have 55 wins, right? Yes, we do. Uh, the Phillies have 51. The Brewers have 44. The Dodgers have 60. So the Dodgers have continued to perform at the level that they uh, were going at. I mean, 714 win percentage is crazy. Although the NL is kind of mid. I say kind of mid. It is incredibly mid. A lot of teams here in the 40 wins. I mean, the whole NL Central uh, is at 44 wins, basically. And the NL East, the Phillies are back. Uh, but the Marlins and the Braves and the Mets, they're in the f uh, 40s as well. So I guess maybe I shouldn't be calling that mid because we're also not that great. We're just not taking advantage of it. Uh, we got to do better to keep the twins at bay uh if we if we lose this division to the twins after having the kind of start we've had guys we're on pace for over 105 wins like come on uh, let's take a look at the roster though uh, creed williams cody lawyerson uh andrew bilotti richie schaefer will klein okay so not really too concerned about that bobby witt is an all-star though 285 yeah 
He's hot. Well, he's not hot, excuse me, but he is um, an all-star, so he's tremendous. Wow, he's down to a 94. He's declining. Incredible to see him decline at 27 by so much. I mean, I don't know what it is about him that's making him decline, but oh well. Tristan Casas is on fire. Grayson Rodriguez, Zach Gallon. Grayson Rodriguez is now our number one pitcher. Holy moly, we acquired him at a 70, an 89, excuse me, uh, and he's pitching phenomenally. 324 ERA. Zach Gallon's pitching even better. Nolan Gorman is hitting tremendously well. 20 homers for him, so there's your power. Riley Green has 14. Rutschman batting 285. Colt Keith has gotten cold. Jojo Romero still not pitching well. He's not pitching well, but he is growing. I'm not too worried about it. Bobby Herman, 245 ERA, should be an all-star in my opinion. Uh, McKenzie has improved, so it's good to see Tristan McKenzie improving uh, his pitching. His ERA is coming down. His war is still negative, not what you wanted to see from a one of our starters. Honestly, guys, I can't really complain about anything going on right now. Uh, ERA for Nick Salen is .39. That is tremendous. Harrison Alonzo in 83 overall is growing really well. Blake Mitchell batting fine as a, as a, as a catch backup catcher. Yeah, guys, honestly, the team the team is just looking phenomenal. How about Julio Villalobos? To a 78 now. I believe he was a 77 last time we checked in. Pat, uh, 224 ERA. Fantastic. Uh, ben Kaderna. Yeah. How, is, how are our prospects doing right now? Um, Andrew Hoffman's hurt. Kevin Garcia uh, is, is growing. 72 overall. 70 overall for Steven Darth, who I don't think is ever going to make it um, to that 99. I think we might want to use him should we look to improve. Saul Farrell. Leonard Enright. Uh, Roger Clark is in single A because yeah, we just have, I mean, I can't, I can't do anything about that back way here. Um, I mean, I guess I could send him down to single A so I could move one of these guys from double A up. We just have so many pitchers. Monty McClure though, doing well. Leonard Enright doing well. Things are going well for the pitching depth in the org here. So guys, I'm going to keep it rolling. Let's get to the draft. Can we beat the White Sox? We can't walk it off there, but we do beat them five to three and 13 to nothing. Tristan McKenzie against the Brewers. Come on, Sandlin, close it out for him. And there we go. <coughs> Excuse me. We are now 58 and 30. Taking a look at the standings, we are pulled two games up on the Twins who have lost the last two. We've won our last three. 58 wins. Beautiful. 58 wins. We're four back of the Dodgers, man. I kind of want I kind of want to pip the Dodgers for the number 1 uh team in all of baseball. But it's draft day. Uh, is, oh, it's in seven days. Oh, wow. The draft day is late this year. It's the 15th. Holy mackerel. So let's go ahead. I, I'm, I'm, I'm done setting the scouting assignments. So you guys get to see us go. And there goes Alex Verdugo leaving the athletics, uh, going to the Reds for Bobby Stockton, a 75 overall 21 year old closing pitcher, Alejandro Vargas and Thomas uh, Navarre, who are both 60 overall Vargas is 19. That is, a, I feel like that's a pretty poor return. Uh, for the athletics. I don't know what they're doing, but, uh, oh, oh my God, Ronzi Contreras. Come on, man. Uh, the Padres beat us eight to six. That's an extra innings. Um, it is what it is, but we do beat Detroit three, one in the series against San Diego here. San Diego is a good team guys. Let's not, let's not forget. San Diego is a very, very good team. It is the draft. Uh, oh, let's take a look at the all-star voting. Um, Tristan Casas is being voted as the number one, um, uh, first baseman but as far as pitchers why where's the Bobby Herman slander coming from I guess oh wow his ERA is 3.0 it really has kind of shot up it was in the low two twos uh now it's in the 3.0 so he must have gotten uh pretty pretty wrecked here in, in one of these games yeah seven so what happened here did he just get like destroyed uh two innings pitched I mean and allowed six earned runs that's That'll do it. That'll that'll bring it right up. That's a bad start for him there. Um, what, what, did he pitch back here too? I mean, we're seeing some Ricky Tiedemann. Did he? Did 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 bad things happen to him here too? Bobby Herman, six innings pitched, three earned runs. So there was two point five here, uh, and then he got to his start against Detroit, and it just did not go well. Uh, but he is going to start after the All Star Star break. Yeah, right there. So. Honestly, guys, things are going well. It is now time for the draft. We lose to the, oh, we lose to the San Diego Padres, who are a good team. But let's go ahead and get the draft off and running and see what next generation prospects we are going to be bringing in here. Now, we have the 21st pick and the 37th overall pick. So that's two pretty solid picks. I have been scouting relief pitchers, believe it or not. So I wanted to see... You know, if we can get younger and cheaper and acquire some really good talent, maybe in the middle to late rounds, we'll do that. 
Um, but but for now, I just kind of wanted to say like you know we're paying three to four million per per, um, per reliever. So why not try and get younger and cheaper at the position? Some prospects there to develop and grow. Maybe maybe we could use our starting pitchers, but I'm not uh, excited about that because they aren't really built for that. But here we go. Salvatore Baez, another Baez going to the Cubs here. Uh, we ranked him 10th. MLB ranked him 5th. He's a center fielder. Looks pretty darn good. Next up, going to, I don't know who it is. It's to the Reds who acquired Alex Verdugo. They're going to get a second base prospect. 22 years of age. Hopefully the overall for them is higher. Same thing with the potential um, on the higher end of the range there. Decent players. Again, not positions I've scouted. Finally, Calvin Beatty. Uh, a catcher, we ranked him 14th, MLB ranked him 10th, we have no idea, he opted out of his physical, uh, he's 19, so um, interesting to see that these three guys going first, no starting pitchers, which is pretty interesting. So let's sim to our next pick, um, take a look at who's on the board, there's a relief pitcher here, he's 19, oh my god, he could be really, really good. Uh, a relief pitcher here, he's 19, we have him ranked second best in the class, but do I really use... Oh my goodness, Lorn Corona here. We've ranked him fourth. Um, his overall could be 76 to 94. His potential is 80 to 98. I know he's only 54% scouted. Um, we have Johnny Nesbitt. Oh, he's a relief pitcher. No, we're going with Lorne Corona and hopefully going to take one of those relief pitchers with our compensatory pick here. Uh, Lorn Corona, though, looks really good. I'm taking him. Absolutely taking Lorne Corona. Lefty bat out in the outfield. 76 to 94 overall and 80 to 98 potential. So hopefully we can bounce back after a what was a rough draft uh, last year. Hopefully this year we can do a lot better. I think I am going to take Doug Smoove. How do you pass up on a name like Doug Smoove? And we ranked him second. MLB ranks him eighth. Great potential. Good overall. Um, could even be a relief pitcher as soon as next season. A righty out of the pen. Only 19. Doug Smoove. Welcome to the Kansas City Royals. I love it. Absolutely love it. All right, our next draft pick. We got four minutes on the clock. Another relief pitcher. Here's a starting pitcher who opted out of his doctor's uh, exam. We got a lot of relief pitchers here. Starting pitcher. Yeah, you know what? Lee Song from South Korea. It's good stamina, good hits. Wow, he actually looks like he could be really, really good. Uh, Lee Song. I think I kind of want to take him. I'm, I've got my eye on the clock. Don't worry. Uh, I know I've screwed up a couple times. There's this shortstop here. Um, could be somebody to see if he's there with our next pick. I mean, we do have a ton. We have a ton of, you know what? We have a ton of starting pitchers in the org right now. There's probably going to be a lot of starting pitchers that we can take that are going to be quality for us. Let's go ahead and take Craig Starks, uh, from Pennsylvania. The shortstop can also play second. I just figured we needed some depth at the position, um, it, you know, in the organization overall looks okay. Potential looks pretty good. Uh, he's at 51. We have him ranked at 51, though. Like, I don't know. I don't know how I pass up on Lee Song if we ranked him sixth, honestly. I think I'm going to take him. He looks he looks really good. I'm taking Lee Song. I know we got a lot of starting pitchers. We will trade those starting pitchers for prospects at positions we need. We now only have one minute per pick. Um, so let's see. Left fielder. Yeah, no, that's okay. I'm just kind of looking at anything but relief pitchers. We don't have too much scouted outside of that so let's go ahead get back to the front of the list here maybe we just take another starting pitcher here in cyprus uh cirrus cirrus paulino from canada looks like he's got a lot of break on his pitches um looks like a decent prospect too another starting pitcher here though right next to him is enrique gilen uh oh god i gotta make a decision between these two 21 18 i'm taking the 18 year old cyrus paulino we're taking another starting pitcher as i just mentioned we have a lot of starting pitchers in the org but hey why not um, a good relief pitcher looking here, though. Francis Berger. I mean, he doesn't have tremendous potential, but honestly, as a reliever, we have him 100% scouted. He looks pretty good. Taking another reliever. This is the first draft class where I've really given relievers a, a, a true shot, a true look with our, our scouts, too. And I feel like we could be getting some relievers um, that are going to help us out sooner rather than later. There's this third baseman, though. He's projected at 132. Maybe he'll be there at our next pick. So I'll take a second reliever now with uh uh which who did i want i wanted francis Berger here yeah his overall looks pretty good he's 18 we're gonna draft him francis Berger. i mean 71 to 86 and then 70 to 85 so he might might be come in as an 82 and stay in 82 but that's absolutely tremendous as a reliever at 18 um on a really cheap deal um all right our next pick uh, is he still there the third baseman horace cabrera 
Yes, he is. Low overall, but potentially high potential. No deliberating about that pick. We are going to make it here. Let's him to our next pick. We're in round six. We're in the final round here. Another starting pitcher with some potential. Uh, not the highest prospect, um, you know, period. But, I mean, we're at pick 187 of the draft right now. It's kind of just swinging for upside. He is only 18. He wants to join us. We have him ranked 90th overall to get him at 187. I feel like it's very good. Very high floor, low ceiling kind of prospect. Could be somebody that ends up pitching as our long reliever. Um, and that is that. That is the end of the 2028 draft class. And there we go. Uh, let's just let's get let's get one more one more game in. Come on, beat the yeah. There we go. All right, we're gonna stop simulating. We beat San Diego. We are 63 and 34, 649 percentage, 0.649 times the 162 games we play a year. Still on that 105 win pace. Did the Dodgers slow down at all? Nope. They're at 70 wins at the all 70 wins at the All Star break. To put that in perspective, in real life right now, the team with the most wins, uh, period, in the AL is Cleve uh, is is Baltimore with 57. In the NL is Philly with 58. Now I know we're like a week away, but nobody's gonna get 12 wins in the next six days, seven days. So. Yeah, the Dodgers are on an insane pace. So are we with 63 wins, but there are teams that could catch us if they just win all their next games. But honestly, guys, the team is playing the way I'd hoped. 326 ERA, 284 batting average. The slugging is 481. So there's the power on. I mean, everything's going well. The fielding's going well. It, it's just it's just it's so nice to see that this team is performing the way we expected it to. And on paper, it should be performing. Only took us until year five, but I guess it really does make a difference if your manager's an A versus a B. But guys, that is all the time I have for this one. Make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see some more, and I will see you guys in the next one. This a free for all, free for all, but we fall. This a free for all, free for all, but we fall.